Turning now to our community focus, we're taking a look at the priorities of Rhode Island's Legislative Black and Latino Caucus. And joining us live via Zoom today is Caucus Chairwoman and Pawtucket State Rep Karen Alzate. Rep, thanks for taking the time. Hi Karen, thanks for having me. So I know last week the caucus unveiled a list of bills that you're hoping to get passed this session. Can you highlight one or two that you think are particularly important to get passed this year? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have 13 of uh, 13 bills on our priority list. Luckily, one of the ones that we were really pushing for was pushed, uh, or not pushed, but we were looking at the source of income bill, which actually uh, we had passed probably two weeks ago, three weeks ago, which was a huge deal. Uh, so, you know, that one will allow for anybody who um, has a, a lawful source of income, they cannot be discriminated against when they are paying for um, in apartments. Um, so one of the biggest ones that hits a lot of our communities is people who have Section 8 vouchers. That is a lawful source of income, and uh, you know we hope that that's going to stop from landlords not wanting to um, allow people to to rent their apartments just because they're on uh, Section Eight. So that's one of the big ones. Uh, we also have uh, some healthcare bills on there that are really big for, and mostly pertaining because of um, COVID nineteen. We saw that the importance of having health insurance. So we have the Rhode Island um, Right Track Care Bill, I think that's the name of it. And we used to have it here in Rhode Island. So if you were a low income or undocumented family, uh, your children were able to be covered through that. And in 2008, I believe we got rid of it. So we're trying to bring it back. We know that it's super important for low income families and definitely our do undocumented families. Uh, but we really need it because I think COVID showed us that, you know, healthcare is super important. Yeah, I know you've mentioned the impact that COVID has had, certainly on all of us, but we know that it's impacted uh, communities of color particularly hard. What are you hearing from your constituents about the toll that COVID-19 has had on them? So it's an everyday struggle for them, which is really unfortunate. So, you know, we're talking about work. We're talking about uh, parents having to stay home because their children are not their children are not back to school and they don't have the funds or family members to stay with them. Uh, so it, it's really, I guess, in a sense, what we are calling really tiring that our communities are. You know, we're still dealing with COVID as much as we'd like to think that COVID maybe went away. It has not. Uh, you know, the city of Pawtucket is doing an amazing job with the vaccinations and we're super excited about that, but we still have a long way to go. You know, we're definitely um, getting as many vaccines out as we can, letting our communities know, uh, but definitely looking at what uh, is going to happen to our communities after people are vaccinated, you know, trying to get people back to work, making sure that they have the funds so that they can pay, you know, for their everyday living expenses, you know, basic needs. What we're seeing too is, you know, groceries are going up, utilities are going up, and um, right now we, we don't have the jobs that we need in order to you know, get better at this. Rep, by my count, there are 11 members of your caucus, and please correct me if I'm wrong there, but do you think there's enough minority representation up at the State House, and do you think your voices are being heard adequately by your white counterparts? Yeah, so there's, uh, so I'm, I'm, even if there's, there's 21 of us right now, so I'm going to say no, that's not enough. And so uh, we're super excited that this is the first time that the caucus has had 21 people. This is the most that we've had in the history of the caucus. So I'm super excited about that. However, we need more representation. We know that um, the 21 of us, we are powerful because there are there is power in numbers. However, you know, more has never hurt us and I definitely think that we have the advantage this year to have our colleagues really hear us as to what it is that we need and I think we take a little bit of that because of COVID they know that our communities were hit really hard they know that our communities we have been advocating for our communities um, this past year and definitely with 21 um, you can't really ignore us anymore. State Representative Karen Elzate thank you so much for your time today.
Thank you, Kim. 